Welcome everybody. It's going to be a very gentle practice to open up the whole body um, and really explore accessible positions that just feel really good to breathe in. So you'll need two blocks and a yoga strap and we'll get started laying down on our backs. So you can make yourself really comfortable. Bring the blocks nearby. We'll use them very soon. And then lay down onto your back and gently draw the knees in towards your shoulders. Roll your shoulders back away from the ears. Then I invite you to make some little circles in your hips, drawing your knees closer together and then wide apart, using your hands to help support the movement. And then see if you can keep your sacrum on the floor as you do that. The sacrum is the triangular flat bone near the back of the pant line, just above the buttocks. And so if we keep that on the floor, this is encouraging a more neutral position in your spine. A neutral position can mean a little bit of curvature um, above the sacrum where your lumbar spine is. But the sacrum itself uh, would be on the floor if you're doing it with a neutral spine. And if not, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Just keep on breathing deep through your nose. Now try to use less and less support from the hands, initiating more and more of the movement from the muscles around the legs and hips. Engage your abdominal core to help the hip flexors stay happy. You can even take your hands to your belly and feel the core activating. So notice how your breathing is no longer a deep belly expanding breath. There's a, a firmness in the abdomen, so the belly doesn't really move much, but the breath starts to go more out to the sides laterally. And then we'll rest the feet on the floor. Hug your right knee towards your right shoulder. Contract the right side of the core, shortening the right side of the spine. And then slide that left leg straight keeping the left heel on the floor. And we'll take a few breaths there. And bending both knees, place the sole of the left foot on the floor again. And bring your right leg up to the sky. We'll take a strap around the right foot I recommend placing it around the ball of the right foot and then hold the ends of the strap loosely with the right hand. If you have an actual loop tied in your strap, that makes the strap a little bit longer, so you might be holding it with the right hand in that case. If you're a little bit tight in the hamstrings, it's great to have that loop because it'll allow you to keep the leg further away so that you can straighten it. Now we'll flex the toes towards the shin to help stretch into the back of the calf and take a few breaths to pause there. As you hang out in this position, try spreading your toes as wide as possible. Jaw relaxed, face relaxed. Now try pressing the ball of the foot up against the straps. You can do that by pointing the foot. If you know how to push out through the ball of the foot, it's kind of like pressing on the gas pedal when you're driving. We'll create a little bit of resistance and pause there for about three breaths, 10 seconds. Notice the back of the leg contracting as your foot pushes out against the strap. One more breath like that. Now flex your toes to your shin, engage the, back, engage the front of the thigh, stretching the back of the leg. And then very gently pull back on the strap as far as you're comfortable, keeping your legs straight. And just notice if there's any changes there. Now holding the strap with the right hand, as you exhale, bring the leg way out to the right. Inhale, come across the center, halfway over to the other side. 
Exhale, bring the leg off to the right. Inhale across the center. And then continue exploring at your own pace, making big circles in that right hip joint. Big circular movements. And feel free to change directions with that same leg. This changes the emphasis a little bit. And then bring that leg over to the right side and we'll hang out for a little bit. Your left knee presses out to the left as a counterbalance. And then very gentle effort is enough. Try to keep the right leg straight, contracting the front of the thigh. Gently pull back on the strap. If you're feeling really loose here, try to straighten the left leg, sliding the heel forward as much as you can. And then come back to the center, holding the strap with the right hand again. Hold it loose enough that you can comfortably point your foot. And then take the left hand to the back of your skull. Tuck your chin. And as you exhale, engage your abs. Try to lift the head and shoulders off the floor. Aim your left elbow towards your right knee. I'll take three breaths here. So this really engages with the abdominals. One more breath, use the hands, tuck the chin, and with an inhale, relax the head down. Exhale, let go of that right leg. Bend both knees, and then hug the left knee to the shoulder, giving it a big squeeze. Contract the left side of the core, shortening left side of the spine, and then slowly straighten the right leg towards the front of the mat. And take a few breaths here. So with this lateral flexion, you might feel some length up the right side through the belly, the ribs. You might even feel a bit of stretch in the front of your right hip if you're contracting the abdomen and the buttock together. Contracting more, mostly on the left side. Right buttock strong. One more long, slow breath. And then bend both knees. Bring the left leg up and place the strap around the foot. Try to get it around the ball of the foot if you can. And then once you place the strap, hold it loosely enough that you can straighten the leg. Engage the front of the thigh and imagine the thigh bone descending down into the hip socket. Flex the toes towards the shin. And we'll hang out for the first five breath or so in this pose, cultivating stillness. Maybe you can feel a stretch in the back of the calf. And then we'll create a gentle resistance. Press out through the ball of the foot and spread your toes. Option two is pointing the foot. So think of using like 20% of your power, holding the foot in place, pull back on the strap. At the same time, keep pushing the foot up. So it's like your leg is trying to escape the pose, but your arm is holding onto the strap to keep it in position. There's a gentle tensioning in the back of the thigh hamstrings and the buttocks are contracting. One more breath. And then relaxing that effort, flex toes to shin, relax the back of the leg, contract the front of the thigh, and then gently pull back. And notice if you have any changes in range of motion. That's a technique called PNF, or proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation. And uh, when I work privately with people, I'll do that on them about three times in a row. And uh, sometimes it's crazy the changes you can see. Like we'll see people get like 20 degrees more range of motion. If 
few more breaths. And that could be done uh, every second day. You wouldn't do it every day. You want to give your body a little bit of time to recover. And then holding the strap with the left hand, exhale, open to the left. Inhale, come across the center. Exhale to the left. And then across the center, big circular movements. Explore. Feel free to change directions. And so even though the arm is guiding the leg, use the muscles around the hip joint, cultivating greater st stability. And then we'll open the leg out to the left, bent knee off to the right, and hold the pose. Use the right knee out to the right side as a counterbalance. So the pelvis stays pretty level. Both hips are turning out. If you're still feeling like you're quite loose here, maybe you straighten the right leg, sliding the heel towards the front of the mat. Pause at a sweet spot. You could also be doing this with lateral flexion again, lengthening up the right side of the spine, contracting through the left side of the core. few more deep, slow breath there. And then slowly come back to the center. Point the left foot. Take the strap with the left hand. Right hand holding the back of the skull. And then as you exhale, tuck your chin. Engage your abdominals, slowly bowing forward. Aim the right elbow towards the left knee and hang out there calmly. Three breath. You can add a slight twisting movement to it as well. Right kidney to left knee. Shaking is good. Inhale, lower your head down. And exhale, remove the yoga strap lower the foot. Take the right leg up again, strap around the foot. Straighten the leg in the center and pull back, engaging the front of the thigh. So we'll take a few breaths to get comfortable. See where you can find a stretch. Where does it feel good? Don't be where it's too much. Be where it feels good. Try to keep that right leg straight. And now we'll do P and F again. So press the ball of the foot against the strap, toning the back of the leg, and we hold that for about three breaths, somewhere between 10, 15 seconds. That's one. So the back of the thigh contracts, the foot is pressing up, two, it could be pointing, or you can be pushing through the ball of the foot. And three, relax the back of the thigh, engage the front of the thigh, and pull back. Hang out at your new range, relaxing the back of the leg. If you're really flexible, you might straighten the left leg to add to it. I'll repeat P and F one more time. So push the ball of the foot up against the strap, toning the back of the leg, holding for three breaths. Feel free to use a little bit more intensity if it's feeling really good. 
This is not meant to be a stretch at this moment. It's more strengthening and end range. And that's about 15 seconds. So relax the back of the leg, flex toes to shin, and then pull back again. Notice any changes at range of motion. And we'll take a few breaths in this new range of motion, keeping the back of the leg relaxed. Feel free to explore, pushing out through the ball of the foot, flexing toes to shin, alternating, find a sweet spot. And then relax and let go. Take a moment, bend your knees, relax, take some deep breath. You can feel the breath in your belly. Feel it laterally by taking the hands apart, touching the sides of the belly and ribs, and keeping gentle tension in the core. Easiest way to find some of those deeper layers of core is taking full exhalations. And then repeat on the left leg. So we'll take the left foot up, looping the strap around the ball of the foot. And we'll start off by contracting the front of the thigh, relaxing the back of the thigh. And this very basic approach to movement is called reciprocal inhibition. If you contract the quads, it sends a signal to the hamstrings to lengthen comfortably without having to really experience much of a stretch. Whereas if you use no technique and just start pulling back, you get a, a strong stretch right away. But that's because we haven't um, engaged muscles to position the bones in such a way that they can lengthen comfortably. So focus on getting the legs straight first and then very gently pull back. We'll take a few more breaths. When we engage the opposing muscle group, it sends a signal to the nervous system to comfortably move into that shape. So gentle stretching is usually enough. Find your comfortable limit, and then we'll introduce PNF, pressing the ball of the foot up to the strap, tension the back of the leg, or point the foot to tension the back of the leg. Both ways work. Holding for 15 seconds or so. About three slow breath. So you might find the left buttock contracting as well. That's awesome. Upper hamstring is strong. This can also be a great way to, uh, to treat injured hamstrings. Training those muscles to contract and end range can be uh, really healing. One more breath. And then we'll go back to that first technique, reciprocal inhibition. So relax the back of the leg, engage the front of the thigh, and very gently pull back. Just as far as it goes comfortably. If there's still room to explore, keep your left leg straight. And then start to straighten your right leg, sliding the heel away from the pelvis. Hang out at your new range. Slow breathing. And we'll do one more PNF. So without changing anything, push the foot up against the strap, toning the back of the leg. It's also really good for joint stability to stay contracted as you explore that full range of motion in the hip joint. Full range of hip flexion in this case. Good. Two more breaths. Pushing the foot against the strap, engaging the back of the thigh. Strong in the core of the body. And then relax the back of the leg, engage the quads. Option to pull back just a little bit more, just to the point that feels good. Hang out in the new range for a few breaths. This gives the nervous chance. The, this gives the nervous system um, a chance to start recognizing this range of motion, to recognize that it's accessible to us on and off the mat. Especially when we contract it in that range, that tells the nervous system that uh, it can still control it. All right, and then relax, let go, set the strap aside. And just notice what there is to notice there. Place your hands on your belly. Take some deep breath. Oh, excuse me. Bring the arms out to the sides. 
And we'll windshield wiper the legs side to side, stretching into the hips. Keeping the feet about as wide as the mat. Then bring both knees towards the left side. And then pausing there, uh, lift your left ankle and bring it to the outside of the right thigh. Just above the knee on the outer thigh. And then explore gently using that ankle to help press the right thigh towards the floor. Uh, just a little bit of effort, not much. See how it feels. Camera one. And then you can explore lifting the left knee and lowering. So feel free to look at the screen. You have a close-up view here. Lifting the knee just a little bit and lowering. Notice as we lift the knee, this actually encourages the thigh to drop a bit more. So you get inward rotation in your right hip. And that's a movement that uh, most people don't have very much of. Even like hardcore yoga people tend to lack it. So you may feel a really nice stretch on the outside of your hip as the right thigh descends a little more. A few more little movements like that. And the next time that left knee comes up, pause there. And we'll take about five breaths. Find a sweet spot. Good. One more long, slow breath. And then slowly take the left ankle off the thigh. Come back to center with the feet as wide as the mat. And go side to side a few times. Camera two. And then bring both knees towards the right side. Place the right ankle outside of the left thigh, above the knee on the outer thigh. And explore, lifting the right knee just a little bit and lowering it. And see if you can find that movement in the left thigh bone. As the thigh bone goes closer to the floor, that's inward rotation and adduction added to the midline and that's the same movement that's used in uh, spinal twisting movements like taking your elbow outside of your leg with your hands in prayer it's also the movement that's used in back bending postures to position the leg bones in such a way that the fronts of the hips get lengthened instead of jamming the lower back so with that little bit of inward rotation not very much just a little bit um, that positions the legs in such a way that the buttocks can contract without pinching the lower back, instead extending the hip and lengthening uh, the front of the hip. So a few more little movements there. You may also feel the benefit of massaging the right buttock into the floor. Oh, that was on my end. The fire truck just went by. We're okay. We're all good here.
camera one. Find a sweet spot. So you can lift that right knee just a little bit, allowing the left thigh bone to descend. Maybe you can find that really nice stretch along the outside of the left hip. Personally, for me, it travels all the way up into the belly and the side of the spine. And then just hang out there and breathe. Try to send the breath all the way down the left side, all the way into the left side of the belly. One more breath there. And then very slowly come back to the center. Windshield wiper the legs side to side, pelvis centered on the mat, and feet as wide as the mat. Camera two. Coming back to center, feet are still as wide as the mat. Allow the knees to fall in towards each other and take a few breath there. Place your hands on your belly and try consciously relaxing around the hip flexors of both legs. A lot of times our hip flexors, uh, they, the volume gets turned up from, from too much sitting in everyday life, whether it's sitting at a desk or uh, sitting at a car or whatever. So it does take quite a bit of work to turn down the volume. Um, it also takes training the abdominals and training the hip extensor muscles, which involve uh, the hamstrings, but especially the buttocks. And just training our general postural awareness. A few more deep, slow breath there. And come back to center. Hug your knees into your chest, crossing the ankles, engage the core, and then slowly roll up. And we'll come to table pose. So if you have your yoga blocks, you can place one on either side of you, one outside each of your knees and a little bit forward. This will have the effect of making the arms a little bit longer. Just repositioning my microphone here it tends to get uh, twisted around a little bit in some of these shapes. So you can place the blocks on their highest heights. We'll meet in table pose. Take the hands a little bit forward. Spread the fingers as wide as possible, like 95% of your max. And then see if you can feel the weight going into your hands as you come forward. And on your next exhale, Sit towards your heels, just going really slow and as far back as you're comfortable. Inhaling, come forwards. If the knees felt weird there, don't go quite as far back, even if you can. And then exhale, slowly go back. Inhale, slowly come forwards. Shoulders over the wrists, notice the weight transfer. And on the exhale, as we move back, there's way less weight through the hands. Much easier to manage. A few more vinyasas, moving with your breath. Strong in the core as you come forward, supporting the lower back. And this, this movement that we're doing, even though it seems simple, try to keep your core strong instead of just dumping into the back. We're keeping the core online to help support the lower back. I invite you to go as far into it as you feel comfortable. Listen to your body. 
I remember about 11 years ago, I was going to physio for various back problems, and I was advised not to do back bends at all. So um, that eventually changed. The main thing is listening to your body, and what's impossible at one time may become possible. The nervous system learns that it can do these things, and we, our bodies also learn how much of which muscles to use. So the main thing is listen to your body. And then next time we move back towards the heels, let's take the hands a little bit further forward. And then tucking your chin a little bit, engage your core, and look between the legs. I'll take about five breaths here. So my pelvis is just over my knees. It could be behind them. It could be forward a little bit. You can play with the position. See what feels good. I think... You know, 10, 20 years ago, a lot of yoga books gave the impression that there was a, a correct way to do a pose, and we still see that attitude lingering on sometimes, but um, I think that's really overly idealistic. There's no one way to do a pose, and every every moment of movement movement is a different pose. So between those two movements we just did, there's like at least a thousand different poses that could be totally amazing. A pose is really just pausing a moment. Very good. And then slowly come up. And then we'll take the blocks a little bit forward and step the right foot forward. You may have to remove the right arm to get that right foot forward somewhere near the front right corner of the mat. If you feel discomfort in your left knee, you can fold the left edge of the mat over. I like to use a pillow underneath my left knee for extra comfort. And so if my pelvis is behind my knee, I'm stuck in hip flexion, just like driving or sitting in a chair. So we want to bring the right foot forward enough that the pelvis goes with it. And now my hip is extended. I can create more extension by engaging my core, dropping the tailbone in the back, and lifting the pubic bone. So my core and my buttocks are all working together. Let's explore some movement from there. As you inhale, explore bending the knee. As you exhale, slowly straighten that leg and begin to sit back a little. Inhale, bend the front knee, press the left hip forward. And then exhale, keep the heart lifted as you straighten the leg, sit back. Inhale, bend the knee. And exhale, move the hips back, try to straighten the leg, engaging the front of the thigh. And do a few more of these movements at your own pace. Once you're really comfortable with straightening the leg, you might also add a little bit of rounding through the spine, spinal flexion. And then next time you lean back, find a sweet spot, we'll hold the pose, engage the front of your right thigh, and experiment. You can try it flexing the toes to the shin, or you can try it pointing the foot. Both ways are really good. Camera one. So pointing the foot can sometimes give us a little bit more uh, relief if you're feeling any kind of tight pulling around the buttock. Try pointing the foot. That can have the effect of helping to drop the tailbone. Or posterior tilt to the pelvis, but keep the front of the thigh contracted. If the back hurts, try to lift your heart. A few more breaths. I'm going to flex my toes towards my shin. It's just a personal preference because my calves are really tight. I've been running after a puppy for the last year, <laughs> since before COVID anyway.
and then we'll bend that knee. So maybe you have the knee behind the ankle, maybe it's over it. Uh, lean onto your uh, right hand a little, and then try placing a yoga block, your yoga block underneath the buttock. You can keep a block under the right hand. You can use that block underneath the buttock for support. Right hand pushing down, and then engage the core, lifting the pubic bone, dropping the tailbone. Camera two. So you can stay in this position, that's really good. Maybe you explore walking the left knee a little bit further back. Maybe you explore strongly contracting the buttocks and the core together, looking towards the navel. See if you can find some length in the front of that left hip. And then to come out of the pose, you can push into your right hand, come off the block, and set it off to the side. Take your right leg back, left leg forward. You can put some padding underneath that right knee. And then we'll explore those movements on the other side. So wiggle the left foot forward, taking the pelvis with it, bend into the knee. Take an inhale, lifting the heart up. And with an exhale, slowly move back, straightening the front leg. Inhale, bend the knee, engage the core. Exhale, straighten the leg, option to fold. And continue feeling your way through these movements. Try closing the eyes. Move with your breath. Inhaling to the lunge, and then exhaling to the half split. And then next time the left leg straightens, we'll pause there. You can flex toes to shin, getting into the calf more. You can also try rooting the heel and pointing the foot. That has the effect of tensioning the back of the leg. Keep a little lift of the heart initially. That's going to help with getting hip flexion, along with a forward tilt in the pelvis. If you start to feel too much pulling around the buttock, the sitting bone, that can come from too much emphasis on forward tilt. So in that case, you push the heel down, think of dropping the tail, and you can actually contract a little bit around the buttock. Kind of like what we were doing with the PNF technique. In cases where the hamstrings are injured, that's a really good approach. Keep the front of the thigh contracted, a few more breath there. One more breath. I feel like I have to talk every so often since we're doing it online, just so you know that uh, your internet connection is still good. <laughs> and then we'll bend the front knee. And from there you can take your right hand, right yoga block, and place it underneath that left buttock. You may have to bend the knee a little bit more to get it underneath the sitting bone. You can play around with it. And then lifting the heart, press your right hip forward, pull your left hip back, and hang out. Feel free to take both hands just above the buttocks. Hands are just outside the sacrum. And then tension the core a little bit. Slight tuck of the chin.
one more breath. And then releasing the pose, take your right hand forward, bring the block off to the side. We'll move back to table position. So that, la that first one was a bit more passive. We'll do some movements in table to help awaken connections around the buttocks. Pushing into your hands, engage the core. And then bring your right leg out to the side and make some circles in the right hip joint. Focus on going out to the side to contract the buttock and then in towards the center. And see if you can keep the rest of the body still. If you'd like an extra challenge, you could do this in downward dog, lifting the hips, pressing the heart towards the left foot. On your next exhale, step the right foot just behind the hand or even outside of it. Lower the left knee down. Feel free to pad that knee again. And then set up the yoga blocks on their highest heights. Take an inhale to bend your front knee. And then as you exhale, keep the knee bent, but just slightly reverse it, tensioning the core. And so you're welcome to keep your fingers on the blocks for balance. The feet are about hip width or so. Camera one. Camera one. So you can work with it that way, that's really good. Option two, hands free mode. Camera two. Inhale, opening the arms like cactus branches. And then exhale, push off the heel, reversing the movement a bit, forearms together. Inhale, open up. You can squeeze the shoulder blades, but keep the core strong. And then exhale, pushing off the heel, spread the shoulder blades, forearms together. Three more to go. So as soon as the hands come off the blocks, we're suddenly asking the buttocks to support the hip joint a lot more. Continue exploring the movement. Then we'll be holding the lunge for about eight breaths. So reversing the movement again, forearms together. From there, bring your left elbow up to the sky. Keep it close to your head and then use your free hand to push back on the upper arm bone, pushing against the humerus. Lift the pubic bone, tension the core, and press the left hip forward. Draw the right heel back. That's already three breaths, about five more. It's quite a bit of work for the buttocks, eh? That's four. Five. Six, press the elbow and hand against each other gently. Seven, but let the hand that pulls back be dominant. And eight, very good. And then straighten that leg. Oof, that was a tough one. So you have the option of repeating the half split with hands on blocks. Uh, if it's comfortable for the knee joint, then you can actually go onto the top of the left foot. So all the toenails are on the floor and then take a yoga block inside of the ankle, sitting back. This is called half hero's pose. Camera one. So you can see my knees are fairly close together. The block is on the inside of my ankle. If this is too much of a stretch for your ankle, you can try placing your hand underneath it for support. Great place to stay. Maybe you fold a little bit, keeping the heart up. If you're really comfortable with knee flexion, you can actually sit on the floor. This involves a little inward spin in the thigh, so we try to aim the left buttock down as a counterbalance. And we'll take about five breaths there. You wanna make sure that your knee is feeling good in these flex knee positions. A little bit of discomfort on the front of the knee is, is okay. That could be ligaments getting getting stretched a little. Just want to make sure that there's no pain on the sides of the knee. Two more breath. I'm going to show the more intermediate one now, which involves quite a bit of core strength. Trying to aim the left glute down while aiming the heart forward. One more breath. Good. Inhale, slowly come up. And then take the yoga block underneath your buttock, 
regardless of which variation you did. And we'll bring the knee off to the left. Right leg squatting. It's one of my favorite movements to explore. So you may need a second block if you're a little bit tight in the, in, around the knee joint. Hands to the heart. Allow the core to activate a bit, leaning back slightly. So a little bit of spinal flexion. Bring the knee into the midline and away from the midline. So this is adduction of the hip with a little bit of inward spin. And then abduction of the hip with external rotation. Maybe there's a stretch on the inner leg here. Continue exploring. And this is a really cool way to, to see how the position of the hip is influencing the position of the foot. Same thing that happens in walking. If we need orthotics, it might be that we're collapsing on one edge or the other. The hip isn't in position, so it can't necessarily work as the hip is designed to. So we, we train the position in yoga. And we bring that into how we walk, how we stand, how we run how we get up out of a chair even, all the time. When I was having a lot of hip problems, I even had to sleep on a certain side to prevent aggravating them. But then with really good glute training, eventually all those problems went away. Just have to be mindful moment to moment. Very good, then we'll bring that leg more towards the center Heel towards the buttock as far as you're comfortable. Take a breath in, and then slide your left hand outside of your right knee. Take the left shoulder forward, spreading the shoulder blade out, and then reach the right arm out to the sky. Camera two. So as you're reaching through that right arm, open the right chest and squeeze the right shoulder blade into the middle of the back. If it's comfortable, you might explore taking the entire uh, left shoulder outside of your leg. It does require a moment of adduction and inward rotation to come across. And then once you're in the pose, you can press the arm and leg into each other. Keep turning the right chest open. Camera two. And then releasing the pose. Come forward. And then we'll move back into table position or downward dog, your choice. You can wag the tail of the dog, moving the hip side to side. Works in both poses. And then we'll do the other leg. So lift that left leg up, making circles in the left hip joint, strong in the buttock. Try to keep the rest of the body fairly still. If you're in down dog, you could allow your pelvis to follow the knee of the sky, lengthening side body a bit more. On your next exhale, step outside of the left hand or step behind it. And then find your yoga blocks. You're welcome to take a cushion underneath your right knee and find low lunge position. Blocks in their highest height. Bend the front knee as you wiggle the ankle forward. Camera one. The feet are hip width or wider, and we emphasize external rotation into the hip. Flexing toes to shin, pivot out over the heel, and then set the foot down. With an inhale, bend the knee a little more. And then exhale, reverse the bend slightly, drawing the core in, lifting the pubic bone in the front. Again, inhale. And then exhale, think of working with the buttocks. Option two, using the arms. Camera two. Inhale, arms out, cactus branch. Exhale, forearms together, drop the chin. Inhale, bend the knee a little bit more, open the arms. Try not to fall over like me. Exhale, forearms together, strong core and glutes. Explore a few more. So it's really in that reversibility of the movement. Whoa where the core and glutes get fired up. And the muscles that we use for the movement are the same ones that stabilize the actual pose once we hold it. And 
one of the biggest challenges here is getting the front ribs to move in. And that can have the effect of positioning the body in such a way that the hip flexors and psoas are lengthened. So we'll pause at a sweet spot. You take forearms together and then bring right arm up. Engage the right buttock, pressing right hip forward while drawing the left hip back. And then use your free hand to push on the upper arm bone gently and breathe. So you might feel a stretch going into the right hip all the way up the side body and through the lat, the underarm muscle, outer right armpit. Keep the work of the pose going up to eight breath total. That's already three. Four. And feel free to back out of the pose a little bit. Five. My front knee is no longer over my ankle because I'm really working on hip extension of the right leg. That's six. Seven. And eight. Very good. And then releasing the pose, draw the hips back, hands to blocks. Take an inhale to slide the foot forward and lift the heart, quadriceps strong. Maybe you stay there on the exhale, holding this posture for a while. Option two, point the right foot and place a yoga block on the inside of that right ankle. This is called half hero. It's sometimes called three limbs forward pose if the upper limbs, the arms, and the lower limb all come forward. Triang Mukha Ekapada Pachimottanasana in Sanskrit. So your right knee is close to your left thigh eventually. If it doesn't go in close right away, that's fine. And if you are really comfortable with knee flexion, you might actually remove the block and sit on the floor. Camera one. And once you're all set up there, maybe you stay tall, maybe you start to fold over the leg. There's a tendency to fall over to the left, so try rooting the right buttock down. About five more breath now. Inhale, lifting the heart, strong in the buttocks. And then we'll place the yoga block underneath the sitting bones again. Allow the uh, bent knee to go out to the right, about 45 degrees. And then fold the left leg, leg in like a squat. Heel close to the sitting bone, close to the yoga block. What we want to avoid is perching forward. So lean back a little bit, moving from the pelvis, hands together, and then explore inward rotation and outward rotation. Inward, going onto the inner edge of the foot, outward rotation of the hip joint, lifting the inner edge of the foot. And just notice what there is to notice. Um, very often, a lot of us are quite tight when we move into external rotation, the inner thigh muscles are tight. And that can have a lot to do with how our legs are positioned when we walk in everyday life. If you walk with your feet turned out, you end up using your inner thigh muscles to do things that the glutes and hip flexors are meant to do. So if we just learn how to find neutral positions, um, that can help us become less tight without really having to stretch all that much. A few more to go. Continue exploring. Camera two. Good, then bringing that leg to the center, uh, you can take your right hand outside the knee, left arm reaches back. We're twisting, turning the left chest open. This is a great place to stay. If you are a little bit looser, feel free to go onto the inner edge of the foot momentarily. Inward rotation of the hip joint. Take the whole right arm outside of the leg, slightly rounding your back. And then left arm opens up. Once you've found your pose, try to press the arm and leg into each other. 
and try to push down through the entire sole of the foot. And then releasing the pose, come back, slide the blocks off to the side, and we'll come forward again into table position. From there, move the knees back a little, and go all the way down onto your belly, lowering the pelvis to the floor. Sphinx pose. Take the elbows forward of your shoulders, camera one, and with the legs hip width or wider, Begin to press your elbows towards your hips. Imagine the front of the thighs spiraling in so the legs are neutral. And then see how it feels to uh, try lifting the legs a little bit. So they're just barely lifting. Lifting and lowering. Lifting and lowering. If that's too much, try resting the forehead on stacked hands. Lifting and lowering. And then you can meet us laying down with your, uh, your forehead on stacked hands. From there, we'll bring the hands to the back of the skull, resting the forehead on the floor. Try bringing your legs a little bit closer together, as close as you're comfortable. And then inhale, lift your elbows, lift your head and chest, pressing the back of the skull against the hands. Exhale, come down. Inhale, lift elbows, head and chest. Exhale, come down. Three more to go. Inhale, lift it up. You can also add the legs. Exhale, lower everything. Inhale, lift elbows, head and chest. Exhale, down. Last one, we're going to hang out there for five. Slight tuck of the chin as you press the back of the skull up into the hands. Lengthening the back of the neck. Lift the elbows, engaging the upper back. Back of the neck soft. And exhale, relax down. Very good. Take the hands underneath the shoulders and then push back, sitting towards your heels. Puppy stretch. Feel free to rest the forearms on the floor and breathe deep. And using very gentle effort, imagine the tailbone dropping, relaxing, lengthening the low back. And inhale to lift the head. Come forward a little bit so your pelvis is over your knees. And you have options. You could walk the hands forward and then bow the head towards the floor, maybe going on to the tips of the fingers. Another option is bringing the elbows close by the head, hands to prayer, exploring reaching the hands towards the neck. And then a third option is using your yoga blocks to do that, building the A-frame of a house, place the upper arm bones on the blocks, hands together, and then let the head slide between the arms, relaxing into the posture. Camera two. You can play with relaxing the belly, letting the heart drop, noticing the feeling of the breath. For some of us, this may be a bit of a stretch in the belly. You can also play with gently tensioning the core, pubic bone lifting, tailbone dropping, Help move the stretch more into the shoulders, getting into the lats. And 
and see how it feels to reach the hands towards the neck or even to the base of the neck. Elbows in. Few more breath. Try engaging the core a little bit more. Tuck the chin. Let the head come off the floor with the chin tucked in, looking somewhere between the legs. And then lifting the head, look forwards, reach the arms forward, and then one arm at a time, slowly come off of your blocks. Bring the legs out in front. Take the hands about half a foot behind you with the knees bent and windshield wiper the legs side to side. Bring the soles of the feet together, knees wide, feet about a foot and a half in front of you or so. Reach your arms underneath your legs, clasping around the shins or feet. Inhale to lift the heart, and then exhale, gently use your arms, relax the belly, and fold forward. You can use the muscles under the armpits, the lats, the same ones we just stretched out, by pressing the elbows uh, towards the inner thighs depressing the shoulders a bit, just like you did in Sphinx Pose. But try to keep your abs relaxed, chest relaxed. Let the whole body relax. Inhale, slowly lift the head. You can keep your legs as they are, or you could bring the feet closer to the pelvis, your choice. We're making our way onto our backs for a full resting Shavasana. So you're welcome to uh, keep the legs out to the sides while you do Shavasana. If you find that you have to use muscular effort to hold that pose, then place yoga blocks underneath your thighs. As your hips open up, the blocks will gradually go uh, further and further away from the midline. If you'd like to do a supported fish instead, you could take the blocks behind your back. So there's one between your shoulder blades. I'll give you a better angle here. Another one could be at the back of the skull. Camera one. And then coming onto your forearms, you can slide the block up between the shoulder blades, just below the neck. And then laying down, use the hands to adjust the second block to the back of the head, the back of the skull. So the uh, neck itself is in free space. 
And then bring your arms out to the sides, relaxing and dissolving the effort. You can let the knees rest out to the sides. Try to relax the inner legs. Close the eyes. And let go of the effort. And if you'd like to reach the arms back while you're in supported fish, it's a great way to move dynamically or to totally let go and rest in Shavasana. As your face totally relaxes, notice the subtle flow of the breath as it automatically moves in and flows up. In traditional yoga, there's an idea of the prana, which refers to um, both the act of breathing externally as the air flows in, but also to the internal movements of the breathing, the sensation of the breath. And so even though we breathe in air and it obviously it flows in through the nose or mouth and flows down, um, when we work with the prana, it's the opposite. There's a sense of the inhale starting around the pelvic floor or the low belly, and then it radiates and flows up through the spine. Creating gentle expansions out to the sides and up to the heart. Take another five minutes if you have it. Take as long as you can to rest. And then I'll leave you to continue your relaxation on your own. So I'll stop streaming the class now so I can enjoy my Shavasana as well. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody. Peace. Namaste.